Welcome to a new game series that I'm making inspired by Riot Games and Red Line where we explore dead and forgotten games that still hold up to this day while talking about their history and finally asking the very small amount of players left why are you still playing this when there is so many other games out there. Let's just get into it right away and make sure you drop a like if you want more from this series because I have got a bunch of other games in mind. Get down! The year is 2010, franchises like Call of Duty and Battlefield are not even close to their prime yet. Call of Duty Black Ops is about to release, Battlefield 3 was about to be announced, the future was bright for FPS games and people were really excited to try all of these different awesome games. Man what a time to be alive if you love shooters. I lived through all of it and spent so many hours until late at night just no lifing all of these projects. Between all of this hype was a franchise that wanted to surpass or or you could say, come close to Call of Duty and Battlefield. Welcome to Medal of Honor 2010, created by Danger Close Games and DICE themselves, creators of Battlefield. Danger Close was in charge of the campaign, while DICE was in charge of the multiplayer, and man did it look good. I remember seeing the multiplayer trailer with the Linkin Park music in the background and I was so hyped. The game felt like a mix of Call of Duty and Battlefield, with vehicles to drive and killstreaks as well. The game released on October 12, 2010. I played the whole campaign and I was addicted to the multiplayer. I don't know why but this game feels kinda special to me, it has that battlefield nostalgia while also being Medal of Honor. Cool maps, an hardcore shooting experience and the weapons feel great. But turns out most people did not like the campaign at all and the multiplayer and thus Medal of Honor 2010 was quickly abandoned by its developers and its players. 14 years later in 2024, our best bet would be that it's completely dead, right? Well, no one is playing the campaign anymore, not even one single person, and the multiplayer servers have been closed permanently for a few months now. But believe it or not, there is a small community of players that are keeping the multiplayer alive with their own server as we speak. 14 years later and there's still a group of people that are loyal to this game, which I'm in their match right now. They even have their own discord so that they can host the game from time to time and that some players can join in. Sometimes they even have a full server rolling, which is absolutely crazy. And so I asked the players, for how many years have you been playing this game? The answers were pretty straightforward, from the very beginning in 2010. Most people are all from 2010 and they've been playing this game for 14 years. We've got old school players that simply never left. Next on the list we have a game that almost completely disappeared from the public eye as soon as it was released. What a shame that players didn't enjoy this experience for what it was, as most people were expecting something a little bit different from it, something more fast paced and unique. It disappeared but it's not completely forgotten. Welcome to Space Hulk Deathwing, taking place in the Warhammer universe, a brutal and badass action shooter inspired by games like Left 4 Dead and Warhammer Vermintide where you advance through levels, doing different missions and tasks while hordes of terrifying enemies are coming at you. It released in 2016. Yes, from the description that I gave you, it does sound like a game that we've seen a thousand times before, but the thing is, you're playing as a literal terminator with up to 4 friends in co-op or with friendly bots. You're literally playing a terminator of the Death Wing, which is the feared first company comprised of the elite of the secretive space marine chapter, which are the Dark Angels, and you engage in a desperate battle against gene stealers within the claustrophobic confines of a space. Oh, these maps feel huge and absolutely 
awesome. In this game, you grow stronger, gaining skills, new abilities, and powerful equipment as you earn experience across perilous missions. At the time of this video, there's only about two servers of four players that I can find, and that's on the weekend. The thing is, they're all loyal followers of the Warhammer universe. Some that I've talked to have started playing recently thanks to YouTubers covering this hidden gem of a game, and some are returning to it from time to time to enjoy this dark, brutal experience. I won't lie, I am one of those people that return to this game from time to time. It just feels amazing to play as a giant terminator advancing to all of these massive hordes. And something with the, all these kind of games that are abandoned and that there's almost no players left is that the community playing it, the players left are so kind and I don't know because they're not used to new players coming to this game so they're always kind to new people and also what I like about this game is that you can feel the weight of your character and the damage that you're doing. It is an awesome game that's losing about one or two players every month. This is Viper 2-1. We received your message, providing close air support. Let's take this town back. Next on the list, we have a game that I have so many memories from. Even though it's not the best shooting experience and far from it, what this game offered was truly ahead of its time when it released in 2011. This game didn't last long because it released in, this, in the same year as Battlefield 3, which killed any other all-out war shooter on the market during that year. It unfortunately didn't stood a single chance against its competitor, which had better graphics and better gameplay, but this game also had awesome elements of of its own. Welcome to Homefront, a big childhood memory of mine. What was thought to be another battlefield competitor was unfortunately crushed very rapidly and abandoned by everyone who knew about it. Homefront offered us an interesting campaign and a gigantic ambitious multiplayer. The campaign was about the greater Korean Republic invading the United States and you were thrown as a soldier fighting to reclaim his country in the war-torn streets of America. The multiplayer though is where the party was at because it offered 64 players battle on PC and consoles. Keep in mind guys, Homefront is one of the first game ever to introduce 64 players online on consoles and it introduced it perfectly. You had massive maps, tons of vehicles to choose from and classes as well. The thing is, well, the gameplay didn't hold up to people's standards, especially because Battlefield 3 released right after, and so it was abandoned in a matter of weeks. I remember playing this game's multiplayer and seeing the number of servers just drop so much massively after it released. It was sad times, but it was awesome while it lasted. Now today in 2024, surprisingly, from the 6 people that I talked to, 5 were new players from less than a year ago, and most of them were from countries like India and on the Asian continent. A lot of Indians do not have access to newly released games, and so they are left with old games that are long abandoned. Next on the list, we have an action shooter which has seen its player base drop more than half in the last couple of months, thanks to a new game release from the same developers. A simple game that has been abandoned by its developers, but still has about 3 full servers of 10 people to play on. Welcome to Arid Ops, from the creators of Escape from Tarkov and Escape from Tarkov Arena. 
Thanks to the recent release of Arena, our ups has seen a significant drop in number of players in the last months. It didn't help that it was already low in numbers, so this new release killed a potential future for our ups. What we have here is pretty much a dollar store version of Escape from Tarkov, but with different game modes as its main selling point. You have Team Deathmatch, Free for All, Gun Game, and so on. A simple game that managed to keep a loyal group of people playing to this day. I couldn't get into a conversation with most players because they were either Russian or Chinese, but one person told me that he wished Escape from Tarkov Arena would have never released, because it's bad and it killed Arid Up's future. It won't have any more updates and is put to the side, but it is still a pretty good game that is free to play as well. <laughs> Next up on the list we have Military Conflict Vietnam. I bet that most of you watching this video right now haven't heard of anything about this game because it pretty much released on Steam and then it disappeared. It was not abandoned but it was abandoned by the players, not the developers. The thing is they're still releasing updates after updates even to this day. The developers working on this really want to keep this game alive. They really want it to succeed and so players keep coming back to it. Not a lot of players, maybe like 10 or 5 or so players that are coming back to it because there's updates after updates. So please guys, if this video is going viral, make sure you guys share this game with your friends, you know, talk about it because it's a game that I think really deserves some popularity. It is really awesome. It's full of features. It's like Call of Duty in Vietnam, but it has so many more features. You have Tons of maps to play on, tons of weapons, and it feels it feels great. If you guys would like more revisit of dead and forgotten games, make sure you like the video right now, and of course subscribe to stay tuned. Target neutralized. Target done. 